Fixing the microphone. La ha la ha. Hello. Elaine Marilakos Edelson here with Astrology Mojo and Transformational Astrology. Want to help you get your mojo back, of course. Come say hello to me. Well, let me just say hello in the chat room because these days I have to actually write something before I see people. What's your sign? Come say hello. <laughs> okay, today, oh, well, first, before we even get going on today, um, you know, I'm talking about the Scorpio, Mercury, and retrograde. We're already in the pre-phase, so things are already starting to come out. Now, if you're new to me, here's my spiel. Um, if you don't know that when I talk about astrology and clairvoyance and all the metaphysical wonderful things, hey, Christine's here, um, you know, especially with astrology, the planets don't make you do anything. No, we live in a cooperation with the cosmos so that when the planets make a move, you feel it. When you make a move, the planets reflect that by way of aspects and angles in astrology. Hence, astrology merely showing you the time. What time is it? Perhaps it's time for wealth, health, passion, purpose. You tell me, what is it time for now? As Scorpio, Scorpio, Mercury in retrograde is what we're going to be talking about through the signs and rising signs. Now, we're not going to get to all of them today. I am going to flip around and uh, give everyone a chance because sometimes, you know, I go in order and then the people go, oh, yeah, it's, you know, mine isn't until the end because I'm a Pisces. Well, let me tell you, Pisces, we're going to see if we can get to you today. Hey, Deborah's here. Hi. And, uh, oh, some exciting stuff. So uh, when a Mercury in retrograde rolls around and we're in the pre-phase and then there's a post-phase, so which it means that, you know, from the perspective of the Earth, it looks like the planet is moving backwards, but actually just the, the way its rotation changes, it looks like two planes in the sky and the one that is, and they're both moving at the same speed, but the one that is further away Looks like it's moving slower than the one in front. So that's how it looks from the perspective of the Earth with any retrograde planet in our solar system. And especially with Mercury, Mercury represents communication, okay? And it's the inside chatter first before you open your mouth and your synapses and what you believe and how you have programmed yourself or have been programmed to believe things that are not true. So the retrogrades come by to help you renegotiate, review, release or renew something. Now, also what happens in a Mercury in retrograde is the past comes back because retrograde means to step back. It's Latin. So when the past comes back, you're being given a chance to, oh, let me think about that. Let me uh, review that. Let me see if that person and I still, you know, is it just a Hey, hello, how are you? And then you're gone again. Or is it, I haven't thought about you in years. And it's so strange that you've just come back because of this thing that's going on and because of the connection to you and your blah, blah, whatever. So when the past comes back, you have an opportunity to review it and see, um, does it still resonate? Do I still need this? Do I still... Um, benefit by this. Okay. So <laughs> this morning I was organizing things for today, making my notes about um, the Scorpio retrograde for each of the signs and which houses they are in, in astrology. And, uh, oh, hi, Elizabeth. And so this, you know, as it usually happens with me, um, I just heard in my head runes runes. And I thought, where, where are my runes? Now, if you're not familiar with runes, they are divination uh, devices. They are uh, ancient Scandinavian and made popular by some books and movies, you know, especially like the Avengers. And But um, runes go way back and it's a form of divination, an oracle of sense and in a sense. 
And so I said to my husband, where are my runes? And so we started looking <laughs> and then I found them and I'm so happy. I was so happy. I found my runes and the bag, the bag, I've had these things for, oh gosh, maybe 30 years. I mean, the bag is just <laughs> is falling apart, but um, they're clay tiles. And if you're not familiar with runes, I'll just pull one so you can see they have different symbols and the different symbols represent, just like tarot cards would, different meanings. Uh, here's strength. And um, so I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to just play with these while I'm talking to each of the signs and I can actually pull a rune for each of the signs. So I'm being uh, reintroduced to my runes. I'm so happy. Thank you, universe, for uh, reminding me. Okay, so, um, well, who else is here? Hey, um, come say hello to me. We're talking about the Scorpio, Mercury, and retrograde for each of the signs and sun signs. We're not going to get to all today. We'll do our best. Let's just plow through. And, uh, and this applies to sun sign, rising sign. If you had Mars in the sign too, it would also... Uh, be very apropos. Okay, let me just organize my notes. All right, so what do we have first? Let me see. First on the list, I have Libra. Okay. Libra, this uh, Libra sun and rising, also Mars because Mars is in Libra right now, so that's an added bonus of up all night. <laughs> Got a lot to do. Um, the second house. Okay, so with Scorpio, uh, Mercury and Scorpio retrograde in the second house, Libra, this is gonna be about uh, really understanding your self-worth and where you can take back your power. Scorpio represents the undercurrents of transformation, you know, the death rebirth cycle. Also insurance matters, surgery, uh, investigative, you know, spy, clandestine, jealousy on one end, obsession, or passion and desire. So Libra, Libra rising, Mars and Libra. If you have um, this need to um, amp up and boost your self-worth, now is a really great time because uh, we're going to see why you won't allow yourself, why you second guess, why you have to study, study, study something and not move forward with it and think, ah, if I just, you know, read that other book or uh, study with that other person, uh, mentor, then I'll be able to, you know, uh, do that thing and earn the money that I really want to earn. So we're looking at a form of debt, Libra, Libra rising, Mars and Libra. And if you have any kind of financial debt, Okay, this applies, right? And so now we, we need to look at budgeting. What are you spending your money on? Uh, where are you saving it? Why are you, you know, throwing it caution to the wind when it comes to finances? But also because um, Mars is in Libra right now, you're being, and remember the planet's not doing it to you. It just means it's, it's timely for you to, to really focus on getting something readjusted. Now, um, you know, for some, it can be a, um, a, a physical issue or, you know, why do you go until you're spent? Uh, why do you do and do until you're done, but you, you feel like you're not done, so you keep going, you know, that kind of thing. And why is it all on you? Okay, so Libra, Libra rising, Mars and Libra, because Mars is also in Libra right now, it's a, a kind of a sense of, um, well, inner reworking. You know, let's pull a rune. It's um, this, this idea that you're not enough, but you really have a desire to make yourself be enough, you know, but you already are enough. <laughs> so if you are enough, it stands to reason that whatever you do will be enough. But of course, you're not going to be the end all be all for everyone, right? So you need to um, narrow your, your reach 
in a sense and really make it if it's a marketing thing if it's an investment thing if it's a health thing focus on what it is that helps you feel really fulfilled right now okay because with uh, the scorpio in the second house you might suddenly have an opportunity to invest in something and the old you would say oh i better get in now or the old you what might say yeah i can't afford it always saying i can't, i don't have enough so we have to look at those extremes because libra energy goes to extremes uh they do it all or they get resentful of having to do any so you want to look at what's the middle ground which is not a compromise the middle ground is not a negative. The middle ground for you is really understanding where is your sense of worth? And can it be enough? Will you allow it to be enough? Um, you know, with, and I want to look at, hang on. So I'm looking at the chart right now. So one, two, three, four. You know, um, Libra, Libra rising. Let's look at your four walls and how you were raised and there's a trauma that needs to there's a trauma that i'm getting now that needs to really be resolved about not just the four walls you live in now like oh your neighbors are loud and there's a trauma no 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 i'm talking about when you were growing up what um y you didn't measure up to in your mind even if you did you know it could be a parental thing uh where you know dad was a sergeant or an attorney or just a tough person or mom never protected you or you know whatever the situation was part of you feels like yeah see you know it's it's never going to happen you know it's never going to be enough i have this itch in the back of my <laughs> sorry hey hi ah oh, francis is here as well hi cassandra and francis is a libra hello so let's uh just review um we're talking about Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio. And right now we're talking about uh, Libra Sun or Libra rising and or Lib uh, Mars and Libra. And um, so what can help the Libra energy right now is looking at not just your finances. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. It's like so there is, and it happened to me the other day. It's like my hair is just tickling my face. Ah! Okay. Um, Self-worth is the main issue. And it looks like finances or it looks like a health issue needing to be resolved. But let's look deeper, further back in time when you had, were divorced from a parent. When you had a perception of a parent and then took the opposite stance. Whatever that means to any of you. I'm going to pull a rune. Uh, so we can get further clarity on that. And um, a rune now, little oracle message for uh, Libra, Libra rising and Mars and Libra. Oh, yes, this one. <sighs> wow. You know, um, this is <laughs> this is great. This is perfect. This is the self rune. You see that? That's pretty cool, huh? And the self, it's all about you. Okay, it's happening again. And um my face is itching. So it's all about you now, Libra, Libra rising. What, where in you do you need to step back into your power? You know, the Scorpio energy is all about assuming a role that transforms you without trauma. So since we're moving into the Mercury in retrograde, we need to go back in time, come forward and say that thing that happened way back when, when I was growing up with my dad, with my mom, with grandma, grandpa, yeah, it doesn't fly, but deep down, you're reliving it. You know, that you're on the outs, you're separate from, your ex this extreme energy is showing itself in your finances. <laughs> Somebody come in and give me a buzz cut. I think that's what I need right now. Oh my gosh, where are you? Okay, so the self rune. This is all about you. Look at my hair. Oh, this is hysterical. Okay, the self rune. Hey, it's okay to be you. Is that okay? Would it be okay to be you and just be you? Um, you know, it's like wanting to live the, hey, I just want to have a day. I just want to have an ordinary world. It's, you know, but you're extraordinary. So uh, what can you do with that? What could you do with that extraordinary energy that you are? Libra, Libra rising, Mars and Libra. Okay, so um, 
<laughs> my husband comes in. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, there is something on my, I'm telling you, it is just driving me absolutely. <laughs> my husband's like, where's the makeup powder? Boof, I need that. It, there's a hair in my face and I'm, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> I'll just leave it. My husband's leaning over my desk. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be so distracting. It's like, isn't that annoying when you're just like trying to talk and then there's like something tickling your face and you're like, where are you? Ah. Okay. Um, let's do the opposite now. Opposite sign of Aries. 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 Ah. Uh, okay. The Scorpio, the Scorpionic Mercury in retrograde, folks, is going to take place in your eighth house. This is for Aries Sun, Aries Rising, Mars in Aries. And um, this oh, has to do with finances and joint resources. So you really want to dig deep and get into your credit cards. What's the debt about? Uh, how can you shore up or consolidate on those cards? Who can you talk to to find out what's the best way to invest your cash? so that you're not feeling strapped, so that you're not feeling, oh wait, what just, where's my money? You know, it's like, what happened? And sometimes we, we don't pay attention to our money and then it just does what it does in a cycle that has nothing to do with our focus. But when you start to focus on something and you give it that attention, what you put your attention on grows. Aries, Aries rising. Well, this is for everyone, but especially Aries, Aries rising and Mars and Aries. Oh. You know what I'm also getting for you? Uh, let me just look at the charts. Hang on. Uh, Aries. Uh, this is all about shoring up your resources for the future uh, career. Are you thinking of retiring? I'm talking to some Aries out there, Aries rising, who uh, you think you're past your prime, even if you're not. And you're thinking, oh, I should probably retire now. Uh, but I can't because I don't have the funds. So now that's where we want to talk to an investment planner. Someone who can help you to grow your money so that you, you know, and reading the book Money, I think it's called Money by Tony Robbins, and uh, looking at insurance, health insurance, life insurance, uh, legacy, estate planning, you know, uh, what kind of energy can you put on that now? Because what's going to come into play, and I'm not suggesting to anyone that they invest finances especially a large amount of finances, uh, during a Mercury in retrograde. No, I don't. No. <laughs> you want to think about it. You want to research it. You want to gather your information. It's the time to review. Where, what can I do with my money? Aries, Aries rising, Mars and Aries. What am I spending my money on? Just like, I'm doing the opposite signs, I guess. Uh, just like Libra, your opposite sign would say, Hey, you know, uh, I invested in this thing and it didn't really pay off and now I'm in debt. Or, uh, you know, but that's not about the thing and it's not about the money. It's about your self-worth. So eighth house uh, deals with um, a Scorpio guides the eighth house. Pluto guides the eighth house. So we are looking at your... Uh, and the word devastation comes in and it's not anything bad. Please don't misunderstand me. Um, what you think might be devastating, like, oh, it would be catastrophic if and fill in the blank. And then you start preparing for that rainy day. But in the meantime, what is your money doing? You know, because if, if just like I gave the example in another um, talk about my mom who was a Scorpio rising, and she kept thinking, oh, there won't be enough money. There won't be enough money. And so she, you know, and she came from poverty, a huge extreme poverty. And, um, and so grew up in that and was always afraid. And then uh, she even worried that what she was leaving to her grandchildren wouldn't be enough. So she was even future projecting, you know, so you want to pull back on that uh, Aries, Aries rising, Aries sun, Aries rising, Mars and Aries, and really start planning on um, allocating certain funds to investments, but also a self-investment, okay, so that it's not uh, deprivation. We're not looking for deprivation, but we're looking to research now. Let's research what we can do with our money, Aries, Aries rising, Mars and Aries, and who we can talk to about that. 
because there's going to be um, an influx. I mean, we're coming up on uh, two eclipses, folks. And this Capricorn eclipse in December is going to be monumental to the structure of not only our country, the world, certain industries. Uh, we're going to see what flies, what doesn't. <laughs> what we can do about it, what we can't, and how to live with things. So uh, what's coming to the forefront now that with uh, this Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio is it's a fluidity issue. It's a transformational issue. Uh, it's a water sign. Okay, but sometimes water can be devastating. You know, water can be destructive. Water can be um, uh, carry bacteria. You know, and what I read recently about bottled waters now being randomly tested, different brands, doesn't matter, different brands being randomly tested. There's plastic in water now because of the, the leaching of the plastic, estrogenic plastic. And then there's Tylenol, traces of Tylenol, traces of um, antibiotics. It's like, how is this getting into our water? You know, so things like that. So when I look at Aries, Aries rising and Mars and Aries, uh, this particular retrograde in the eighth house is really going to bring up um, what you do for work, why you do it, and how to better invest your time, energy, money, resources in your future. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, let me just do my checklist. Oh, and I'm going to pull a rune for Aries, Aries rising, Mars and Aries, because I'm back into my runes again. I'm so happy. All right. Thank you, universe angels, architects, starseed. A little message for Aries, Aries rising with the runes. Oh, okay. You know, I'm so excited because I look at them and go, oh, wow, I haven't seen that in years. <laughs> I haven't seen that rune tile in years. And I honestly can't remember what it means. <laughs> Wunjo, it's called. Looks like the letter P. Winjo. Wouldn't you like to know what Winjo is? Okay. And I'm going to have to refer to the book because I really don't remember. Oh, joy and light. Oh, oh, rapture. I have a brain. Um, new energy. Lock, blocked energy. Um, aligning with the self is what it refers to, but not under... Um, the past conditions. So it is about transformation and really looking at uh, what you can focus on gratitude wise and uh, where you can allot your blessings. And that literally means material gain. So we're looking at what do you want to do with your earnings? So isn't that ap apropos? Thank you so much, universe. Perfect message. What do you want to do with your earnings? How do you want to appropriate your funds and shore up your energy, your own personal energy, Aries, Aries rising, Mars and Aries, so that you can, you know, you can have fun, but also plan for the future. All right. Okay. Now who's next? Capricorn. Let's just go there. Capricorn, Capricorn rising, Mars and Capricorn. Okay, this is going to be an interesting one for you because uh, the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio is in the 11th house. And now this deals with, and because we also have Saturn in your sign right now, you're having a Saturn return, Capricorn, Capricorn rising, Mars in Capricorn, and uh, Pluto is in Capricorn. Okay, so with the Scorpio energy kind of smoothing, it's like water. I think of uh, Feng Shui and water over the rocks. You know, the Capricorn is the stoic, hard energy. That's you. You're always, you know, the rock for everyone else. And then comes the this f fluid feeling that I'm getting um, in the 11th house. And it's really looking at the the basic definition of the 11th house is friends, associations, associates, groups or memberships. And it <laughs> it makes me think of Groucho Marx who used to say um I would never want to be a part of a group that would have me as a member. <laughs> So Capricorn, Capricorn rising, Mars and Capricorn, if you are thinking of rearranging your groups, um, yeah, you're, you have boundaries now. You're very specific about, yeah, I don't want to be part of that. 
that's does not resonate with me. I mean, seriously, you're culling your your friend world. And it's also being culled for you because people who say that they are friends who don't show up when you need them, they're not really friends, right? Um, and the types of associates that you would now want to be part of, uh, they have to come through just as much as you would for them. Capricorn sun rising and um, Mars and Capricorn. So the Scorpio retrograde for you in the 11th house is going to bring back old friends into the picture. I would not be surprised if they were Scorpio, Scorpio rising. But whoever they are, um, they're gonna, you're going to revisit them. And remember, this is all based on either your desire expressed through passion or obsession. So as an example, I am a Capricorn rising sign. What just came back? My old runes from 30 years ago. I'm just, oh, and that reminds me. Oh, aren't I writing a third book in my series that is about um, Vikings and runes? Oh, yeah, so I need to study. <laughs> Not only do I need to study, but what came up for me the other day as well was very strongly, I need to get back into writing groups. So I sampled a group in town. They were not for me. And I let, you know, I was very polite and said, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and then I went back online and I started doing a master class with David Baldacci, whose books I've never read, but he writes mystery. And I thought my next book is going to have uh, uh, elements of mystery in it. So, um, okay, Capricorn, Sun, Rising, Mars, and Capricorn. You see where I'm going with this? It's your desires can either move into uh, your passion Mine is writing. What's yours? What's your desire? Your groups? How do you want to serve? But not at the sake of yourself. Or obsession. Where do you keep finding yourself, you know, being gravitated to? It's like the people who, oh, they're so needy. It's like, well, all right, I'll do it. Or you roll up your sleeves and you go, all right, I can do one more thousand thing in my day just to help you out. But no, now you have boundaries. So yeah, so this uh, Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio is going to show up with groups, with your passions, your dreams coming true. That's the 11th house in astrology. So what, what are your dreams? Where do you want to put your passion? And let's let go of the obsession. And we can use another word instead of obsession because you might say, I don't obsess. I don't obsess about helping others. Really? <laughs> okay, tell me another joke. Um, so the other word might be um, service. The need to be part of a group so that you feel needed. Capricorn sun rising, Mars and Capricorn. We need to set a boundary to that, okay? And that's going to show itself whether you want to or not. And that um, that's a very... Uh, um, exciting time because you might be called to, Hey, it's, I haven't been around in four years. You want to meet for tea? It's like, Oh, oh wow. Okay, sure. Uh, and then you, you're sitting there talking to this person and you go, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> or I'm so excited. They invited me back into the fold and I, I, yes, yes. I want to know more. So let's think about that and, uh, get a rune for you. Um, I have to look in my bag of tricks here. Ah, what is that? Noth is. Of course it is. But I didn't. I, Noth is. And that is uh, not upside down. Noth is. Okay, Capricorn, Sun, Rising. I have to refresh my memory with my notes here. Noth is. So saith the Scandinavian gods, constraint, necessity. Okay, What's, does that not make sense? I, I love this. This is a cycle of initiation for you, Capricorn sun rising, Mars and Capricorn. Um, and if you get ousted from a group, please don't take it personally because the universe is helping to cull. What was I just saying? I love this. Thank you, universe. Uh, to cull these places that draw your energy. Remember, Saturn's in your sign. You don't have time. You don't have the energy to be putting out to people in groups that don't re return. There's no return on investment. There's no joy. There's no joy. You are in denial. If you're in denial, you're giving it the sake of yourself. There, said. So um, it even says the need for restraint is unquestionable here. 
So you have to be really careful about the groups that you're with, who you're, you're giving your time and energy to and why. That's the bigger question. Okay, I hope that helps you. Capricorn, Sun, Rising, Mars, and Capricorn. Now let's just stick with the um, archetypes and I will go now to Cancer. <gasps> cancer, Sun, Rising, Mars, and Cancer. We are looking at house five for you. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, Cancer, I think you and who else? You and maybe Taurus are going to have some of the sexiest weeks coming up. Yeah. Yeah, you. Uh, cancer, coming out of your shell right now. Um, <laughs> Scorpio retrograde, uh, Mar Mercury in retrograde, is going to take place for you in the fifth house. That means a couple of things. Now, some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, I... <sighs> I have kids, um, I'm concerned about them, I'm worried about them, how are they going to fare, what are they doing, you know, how can I help them, and it's going to bring up an inconsistency in your relationship with your child. This Mercury in retrograde, you're going to see something glaringly apparent. I'm getting that for some of you, okay? And for others of you, it could still mean the first group I'm talking about, but for others of you, it feels like you're going to let loose and just, you know, let your hair down. Okay, um, I guess we're looking at some X-rated times. I don't know. <laughs> Are we? Shh, don't tell me. I don't think that's allowed on Facebook. So Cancer Sun, Cancer Rising, Mars and Cancer. This particular Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio is really going to help you feel free with your creations, not just sexually or sensually. But inside your relationship, if you need some healing time, remember Scorpio represents healing, rebirth, rejuvenation, you know, death to birth from the ashes. So, and it's cutting. So some of you will be facing surgery, not cancer. I'm talking about any of the signs, but Cancer Sun, Cancer Rising, Mars and Cancer, this particular uh, Scorpio thing is Mercury and retrograde in Scorpio is really going to be very freeing for you. You're going to revisit your creative projects from the past, how to approach creation that could be procreation. So that involves, you know, woo, ooh la la, but also it's how, how do you want to express yourself right now? Is it through music or art or um, helping children? Is it uh, through writing? Is it through creating a product? You know, so fine tuning all of your abilities and then, you know, letting your hair down and just like, let it go. What do you want to do? You want to do decoupage? Okay, go for it. You know, because Sometimes we stop ourselves, this is for everyone, not just cancer, sun rising and Mars and cancer, but sometimes we stop ourselves from being um, free with our expression because, oh, it, I don't have the time, I, it, there's no money in it, um, it's just, I'm going to put on the back burner, what does it serve, it doesn't serve a purpose, but if you do this thing, music, art, project creation, uh, romance, um, giving birth, Pro, you know, having kids, being with kids, teaching children, creating a, sil a syllabus or a curriculum. If you're creating something, you know, that's, that is poetic in it of itself, right? That is profound. That is pure conscious love in action. So cancer, sun, cancer rising, especially. I, I want to see you let go and, and just like, yeah, go have some fun. Go, go have fun. My husband's a cancer. We just did two concerts this week. Oh my gosh. You know, driving back and then it's not local, you know, and we're not young. <laughs> er. <laughs> so it was a little tiring to drive <laughs> three hours round trip. Um, but it was so fun. It was so worth it. We just kept saying, this is so worth it. We saw Phil Collins. We saw Steve Hackett, original member of Genesis, uh, all in one week. It's two separate times. And um, it just was, and then it brought out the teenager in my husband and in me. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So Cancer Sun, Cancer Rising, and Mars in Cancer too, but especially the Sun and Rising. Let me pull a, um, a tile for you because uh, your ability now to really work through 
the intricacies of relationships, profound creative relationships. It can be a business relationship too. It doesn't have to be romantic. Um, you know, you're working on a team with someone, you know, because we've got a lot of this intense Capricorn energy, Saturn and Capricorn, which is your opposite um, in the house of relationships and Pluto there too. So we're purging the old new way to have relationships, new way to go. All right. So um, thank you, universe, starseed, angels. Let's get a, a rune for the for the feisty Capricorn, um, the feisty Cancer, sorry. <laughs> for Cancer, rune for Cancer. Oh, this one wants to be part of the mix. Oh, what? We know it as the protection sign, right? Protection, why? Why? It's called algiz, if I'm saying that correctly, algiz. Uh, why would you need protection, Cancer? What do you think? Well, you're always trying to protect yourself, Cancer Sun, Cancer Rising. But really, what, um, what is it? <sighs> I want you to think about the times that you s struggle with a partner or a partnership during a creative time and what you might put on them and how it causes you pain. Okay, I'm not sure what that means for some of you, but perhaps uh, expectations come to mind. Or, you know, if you're trying to, because cancer energy can be very uh, policing. You know, it's, they care, they nurture, they do it through food, through finances. Uh, and now with this Scorpio energy, it's, it's a water sign just like you. It's like free up. If you want to get something done and you've been prodding your partner or a business partner or someone to, to go do this thing, um, and it's causing you some strife or angst because it's not working or you're trying to get your partner to do something, your marital partner, your business partner. Um, uh, and you could be in a collaboration with, uh, maybe you're a singer and the guitarist isn't working with you, or you're a writer and your editor is not really coming through for you. Stop trying to get them to do something and go do something for you. That's the, that's the message of pain and protection. It's like, uh, go serve yourself right now during this retrograde. And it's really going to help you to free up everything we just talked about. Okay. Um, yeah, because you know what you need, but you can't always get other people to do it for you, right? You got to do it for yourself and don't be so hard on yourself either. You can be way too much. Okay. Now, uh, thank I hope that's helped you. Cancer, cancer rising. What time is it? Okay. Okay. If I do the next pairing, let me see. Uh, um, do, 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 do. If I do the next pairing, that's going to take us over an hour. So I think we're going to stop there for today. And then I'm going to be back on Monday and we're going to be, uh, Virgo come back because you were next in line. Um, and Virgo rising and, and we're going to continue with sun and rising sign uh, for the Mercury and retrograde in Scorpio as I stumble over my words. <laughs> How is that for people? Hey, Renee's here, Virgo. Deborah says Mercury and Aries. Oh, me too. Quite the chatter, huh? Me too. Um, so I think it's important that just to wrap this up, I'm going to pull a rune for the entire group. Because my runes are back. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about the Mercury and retrograde in Scorpio for some of the signs. I'm doing sign pairings. Please come back. It's going to be in several parts, um, probably two or three parts, just so I can get to everyone consistently and um, with good info. And I apologize for that, you know, thing I did earlier where I just could not get the hair out of my face. Okay. So for the entire group now, I'm going to pull a rune from my old, I'm so happy it hasn't ripped. It's so old. <laughs> but hey, in a retrograde, even the old things that come back are so valuable. Um, so let's see. Oh, there's the chat room. Let me just say hello to people. Cassandra Scorpio. Well, this particular Mercury in retrograde is really going to be revealing for you and, and helping you to let go for anyone who's a Scorpio, but we'll talk about that next week. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull a rune for everyone right now. Even if you're listening to this in a replay, this is going to apply. I always trust that you see what you need to see the moment you need to see it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Words of advice. Um, actually I got two. 
and uh, oh, it looks like the less than opening. Do 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 do. So I'm just gonna look at the notes. Cano. Renewed clarity and opening, folks. That's what the universe is calling for you. Um, and I think regarding this retrograde, the cano represents also fire and a torch. So where once things might have been in the dark, um, they will now come to light. So pay attention. And remember in a Mercury in retrograde uh, to allow for extra time, not to assume, and also to show reverence and gratitude for every little thing that you have. Let's bring the awareness back to what transforms you on a soul level. And I, I think it's going to be, um, this is the second tile that I pulled. Ah, sorry, goes that way, yeah. And it's called um, fertility. Let's just look at my notes on that one. Fertility, new beginnings, also called ing the hero god, but uh, fertility, new beginnings. And um, using humor, you know, especially in this retrograde, and fertilizing the ground for future planting. So that's where we look. So let's look at these two, Cano and I kind of do it. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can, can, can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm funny, Jen says. Well, I'm so happy. Let's continue to use the humor <laughs> that we need to get us through. This retrograde is really going to be profound for a lot of people because it brings up those. Remember, it's about your desire. And are you going to utilize passion? Are you going to go toward your passion or are you going to go toward obsession? No, <laughs> you're not going to go toward obsession are you? No, that's not for me to say, but I'm only recommending. I'm here only as a messenger, folks. So <laughs> I will be back on Monday to talk more about, we're going to start with Virgo. Uh, we're going to talk more about Mercury uh, in retrograde in Scorpio for the sun and rising signs. All right, folks, I hope this was fun. I hope this was um, informative for you. And also, if you, oh, I don't have it handy but um ah uh, talk about being unprepared what is mercury in retrograde for taurus let me see and <laughs> we'll get to that on monday okay folks thanks for being here thanks for being remember you're a pure conscious love and it's all about being in the now and putting your love into the world in your most unique fashion go ahead do that be that and i'll see you on monday